Good morning and welcome to worship. I'm Pastor Mary Armstrong Reiner, pastor at St. John Lutheran Church in Griffin, Georgia, and I welcome you to worship today on this first Sunday of Lent. You can follow along the bulletin. Um, it is on our website, stjohngriffin.org, or it might be in your weekly email that you have received. Uh, it's on our website as uh, the bulletin, and you can just click on it and follow along. Today is a special day in the life of the church as we begin this Lenten season together. As we hear the story of Noah and Jesus being baptized and then sent into the wilderness, we are called to, to remember that in our own baptism, there are times when we may feel we are in the wilderness, but God is always present, always there to help us in times of trouble. And so you are invited to join with me in the liturgy this morning of this first Sunday in Lent. And now we begin with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy over us. Our sin is heavy and we long to be free. Rebuild what we have ruined and mend what we have torn. Wash us in your cleansing flood. Make us alive in the spirit to follow in the way of Jesus as healers and restorers of the world you so love. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, our sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Our mission here at St. John is we trust God and invite you to experience God's inclusive love. Our gathering song for this first Sunday in Lent is the Great Litany. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. In mercy, hear us. God the Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the cunning assaults of the devil, from an unprepared and evil death, good Lord, deliver us. From war, bloodshed, and violence, from corrupt and unjust government, from sedition and treason, Good Lord, deliver us from epidemic, drought, and famine, from fire and flood, earthquake, lightning, and storm, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us by the mystery of your incarnation, by your holy birth. Help us, good Lord, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and suffering. 
suffering by your death and burial. Help us, good Lord, by your resurrection and ascension, by the gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us, good Lord, in all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death and in the day of judgment. Save us, good Lord. Though unworthy, we implore you to hear us, Lord our God, to rule and govern your holy Catholic Church, to guide all servants of your church in the love of your word and in holiness of life, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense to those who would believe, and to bring into the way of truth all who have gone astray. We implore you to hear us, good Lord to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful workers into your harvest, to accompany your word with your spirit and power, to raise up those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the faint-hearted and the distressed. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to give to all nations justice and peace, to preserve our country from discord and strife, to direct and guard those who have civil authority, and to bless and guide all our people. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to behold and help all who are in danger, need, or tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to preserve and provide for all women in childbirth, to watch over children and to guide the young, to heal the sick and to strengthen their families and friends, to bring reconciliation to families in discord, to provide for the unemployed and for all in need, to be merciful to all who are imprisoned, to support, comfort, and guide all orphans, widowers, and widows, and to have mercy on all your people. We implore you to hear us, good Lord, to forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to reconcile us to them, to help us use wisely the fruits and treasures of the earth, the sea, and the air, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Give us peace.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Please join me in the prayer of the day. Holy God, Heavenly Father, in the waters of the flood you saved the chosen, and in the wilderness of temptation you protected your son from sin. Renew us in the gift of baptism. May your holy angels be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with our readings of the day. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark, I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of, the, of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. to shame who are treacherous. Show me your ways, O Lord, and, and teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your steadfast love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. You are gracious and upright, O Lord, therefore you teach sinners in your way. You lead the lowly in justice and teach the lowly your way. All your paths, O Lord, are steadfast love and faithfulness to those who keep your covenant and your testimonies. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 18 through 22. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited patiently in the days of Noah during the building of the ark in which a few, that is eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism which this prefigure now saves you, not as a removal of dirt, 
from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. gospel this day comes from St. Mark, the first chapter, beginning at verse 9. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. And this is the good news, the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We've heard the baptism story of Jesus several times in the last few months, but this time we hear it from Mark. And we don't just hear the baptism of Jesus, but we hear that immediately as soon as Jesus is baptized and God has proclaimed him as his son, in whom he is well pleased, it says the words, the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. And there he was for 40 days, tempted by Satan with wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Our first lesson today is part of the story of Noah with the flood, which also was rain for 40 days. The number 40 is an important one in scripture. Another 40 is the 40 years that the Israelites and Moses wandered in the wilderness. There's that word again, the wilderness. It's interesting to think about these lessons and to think about those 40 years in the wilderness and to be reminded that even though we become part of God's family in baptism, even though we are forgiven, it does not mean that we ourselves will not go into the wilderness of life. For Jesus is sent immediately, it says, into the wilderness, and there he was tempted by Satan. Now, Mark doesn't give us the explanations that some of the other gospel writers give, but it is interesting to note that he says he's there with wild beasts. I'm trying to imagine 40 days in the wilderness with wild beasts. Can you? What do you think that would be like? But it says, and Satan tempted him while he was there. Satan, wild beast, but then the angels are waiting on him. It's an interesting story to think about and to imagine in one's mind. Noah and his sons, his families also went through a wilderness of rain of rain that was sent for 40 days and for 40 nights that God sent because God was so upset with the people, but he saved Noah and his family. It was the end of one period of history from the water, the watery grave, and then another of Jesus, this other part of the history of faith, using water in a different way to cleanse to be reborn, to start again. Think about your own life and the wilderness that you have experienced. I'm not talking literally like going to a national park or on a safari. I'm not talking about going to the zoo and encountering animals. I'm talking about the difficult moments of life where you feel so lost, where you're not sure, is God there? Where you wonder, am I okay? Will I make it through this? 
where you face great questions that you're not sure what the answer will be, or you think you might know the answer, but you're afraid of the repercussions of your answer. Faith does not mean that we will not go through wilderness times. In fact, it is a part of the human condition to go through wilderness times, to go through the difficult moments. And Jesus shows us that he is no exception. He is just like us because he is driven by the Spirit immediately out into these 40 days. We are in the 40 days of Lent. This time of looking at our lives, of repenting, of asking God's forgiveness, of seeking on our walk with Jesus. Maybe to turn around. Maybe to start again. Maybe to remember the promises of our baptism that we might live on those and trust in those even if you or I might be going through wilderness times now. The promise of God is true. And in the story of Noah, we hear God make a promise to Noah and his sons that he will never again flood the whole earth. And it's interesting to think about because my husband David and I were talking about this and he said, you know, I never thought before about it this way. He said, we talk about the rainbow in the sky that is a sign from God that the world, the whole world will never be flooded again like it was. But he said, God talks about putting a bow. He said, I always think of a rainbow. And he says, that's part of the sign of the covenant. But he said, it's also God saying, I'm going to put down my bow and arrow. I'm never going to kill everyone, the human race, except for a few people. Again, I will never do that. And this is my covenant because he said, God is putting down his bow. How many of us need to put down our bow? How many of us need to release hatred and anger how many of us are struggling with loving ourselves? Oh, that may not seem the same, but in some ways it is. Because when we don't know that love that God has for us, for ourselves, it can be anger turned inward. It can show itself in depression, in all kinds of different ways, in painful ways. No, God does not promise life will be easy. And we know that from the story of Jesus. We know that he faced Satan head on and wild beast. I can't even imagine it. And yet, I can think of times in my life when I have faced that myself. When it felt like I was facing Satan. When it felt like I was facing the most difficult questions of my life. And yet, God was always there, never alone. Noah and his family were not alone either. God was with them through those 40 days and those 40 nights. And while I may not understand why God felt the need to let all the other people die, I still take some hope in that story. And every time I see a rainbow in the sky, I am reminded that God has created the beauty of that rainbow in all its colors to remind us of how much God loves us and the world. My husband also wrote, he writes a weekly column for the paper and he wrote a very interesting column, and I really thought about that, especially as we are in February and it's African American History Month. And he wrote about all the people he's, the things he missed out that he didn't pay attention to in life. And 
how um, when he was in high school, he was looking at his yearbook and looking at the marimba band. Yes, David was from California and they not only had an orchestra and a band, a marching band, but they had a marimba band and how he missed out on that and how he wishes he'd paid attention to that when he was in high school. He said, and I think this is a good point to make. He said, so many people, so many Anglos, so many whites want to say, I don't see color. But he said, nobody wants a gray rainbow. We need all the colors of the spectrum. We need all people to be who they are, their background, their history, their race. This all things to rejoice in who we are, our heritage, where we come from, every land and every tribe and every nation. God sees for God created each land and each tribe and each nation. It makes up that rainbow, that color. And it reminded me of my encounter as a young Lutheran. I did not grow up Lutheran, many of you know that. But I joined the Lutheran Church in my early 20s when I moved to Kansas City and I joined Atonement Lutheran Church in Overland Park, Kansas. And I immediately got involved in the life of the church and I loved it. I was involved with a lot of things. I was a reader at church. I was on the new member team. I was involved with social ministry and that, that experience of social ministry really, really changed my life. I also got to be a delegate to some of our conference, some of our district meetings because we were the American Lutheran Church, the ALC, one of the three branches that formed that Evangelical Lutheran Church in 1988. Well, on one of those events that I went to, I met Bishop Nelson Trout. Now, many of you may not have heard of Bishop Nelson Trout, but he was the first African-American pastor that was voted to become a bishop in one of the predecessor Lutheran Church bodies. I got to talk to him just briefly, but I was so moved by him and his stories and his faith. And I know that he encountered the wilderness and he encountered Satan, even in the nicest of white people, who I'm sure said things to him that were, mm, well, were insulting or on the border or just things that were not okay. But Bishop Trout had such, a heart for God and he had such a great sense of humor and he was such a I, I just loved him from the moment I heard him speak I was so moved by him and you know you hear a lot of pastors in your life and honestly there's a lot of sermons I've given that I don't remember that doesn't mean I wasn't spiritually fed but I remember and this is from 35 years ago I remember hearing Bishop Trout speak. And he told the story of going on a mission trip. I don't remember where he was, but what I remember is he shared with us that on that trip, he encountered a man who had no shoes, who wanted his shoes. And he told the bishop, can I have your shoes? And Bishop Trout said, he looked at the man and said, yes, you can have my shoes. And he sat down on a bench and he took off his shoes, shoes and he handed them to the man. And he talked about how an important moment that was for him in his faith. And I've never forgotten that story because he reminded me that we all are called in sometimes the most simplest of ways to demonstrate God's love. Bishop Trout was an amazing man, and to, to this day, there are now an annual speakers uh, at his home seminary, Trinity Lutheran Seminary in Ohio, where he went to seminary. This year, Dr. Rever Reverend Dr. Beverly Wallace, who is from the Senate, and I know her, she's wonderful, will be the speaker as they had to cancel it last year, and I hope to be able to hear her speak. But Bishop Trout is but one of many people who make up the rainbow of faith. I don't want a gray rainbow, and I certainly hope you don't either. I hope that what we see in each other is the beauty that God has created in who we are, in the people we are, 
from where we come from and all the experiences of our life. And I hope that we are encouraged that whether you are currently dealing with wilderness issues or have been there before, that like me, you put your trust and your faith in a God who knows intimately what we face and who walks beside us and helps us through each day we live. And maybe the next time you or I see the rainbow in the sky, we will remember that just as God has laid down God's bow, so we too are called to lay down our bow of pain and violence and anger and hatred to ask God to forgive us and to use us so that all will come to know that God loves them, that God is with them in the good and the most difficult of days. And that even when we are in the wilderness, God is right beside us and will see us through. And so, dear sisters and brothers of faith, on this day, on this first Sunday of Lent, as we are just beginning this journey, I pray that you are on the path with me, that whatever you might be facing or dealing with, you are bringing it to God to help you through. And I pray that all of us are encouraged by this season to be seeking God ever more closely, to take this opportunity to draw closer to the gift of life given to us in Jesus Christ, our God's only Son, who so loved the world. Amen. Our hymn of the day is, Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. throughout the world and the church throughout the ages, we profess our faith, the faith in which we believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we join in the prayers, our, your response is, your mercy is great. In Jesus, your realm has come near to us in every place and time. Give your church throughout the world a spirit of humility and repentance. Teach us to trust always in the good news of your salvation. Bless the ministry of Augustinian Lutheran School, Guatemala, and St. Johannes, Bavaria. We pray for Grace Missions in Shamewa Orphanage in Haiti. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. All your paths are steadfast love and faithfulness. 
direct the words and actions of leaders in our community and throughout the world, that they may maintain justice for the lowly. Protect those who serve in the military, especially today. We pray for Sequoia, Chris, and Chance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Even in the wilderness, you are with us. Walk alongside migrants and refugees crossing dangerous lands. Tend to those whose lives feel desolate. Give healing and strength to all who suffer, especially today. We remember Kathleen, Charlie, William, Bob, Susan and David, Maureen, April, Andy and June, John, Sarah, Ken, Catherine, Micah, Terry, the Sackmar and McDaniel families, Bill and Elizabeth. Hear us, O God. Your, Your mercy, mercy is great. For those celebrating birthdays, Amelia, Leanne, and Rick, those celebrating baptisms, Cheryl, Lyle, Dennis, and Martha, and expected parents, Bobby and Candace, hear us, O God. Your mercy, mercy is great. Is we lift up all others we name in our hearts or on our lips at this time. Hear us, O God. Your mm -hmm. mercy is great. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people spoken or silent for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Mm -hmm. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. We share with one another a sign of Christ's peace, and I pray that you know the peace of Christ today.
mentioned today that our the Lord's Prayer, as has been the tradition other years, will be sung uh, during this season of Lent, and you are invited to sing along as that um, is played today. Um, we want to just thank all of you for continuing to support the ministry of St. John Lutheran Church um, as we continue to serve our community uh, around us and in the state, in our country, and in our world. And so I just want to thank you for those who are able to continue to support the ministry. Thank you for those who come by, who mail, who send a check, who send it through your bank. Um, if you would like to use our Tithely account, you can go on to our stjohngriffin.org um, website, and there's a place there where you can click on and be able to give a donation. And now please join me in the offering prayer. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. today I just wanted to share for those of you who've been about a part of the congregation for a long time that Tommy C. Neal passed away this past Wednesday and her service was on Saturday. Uh, I officiated at her service at Connor Westbury. She will be buried later this coming week uh, at Forest Hills Memorial Garden in Forest Park. Uh, I let Pastor Hako Von Hacke know and he and his wife Michelle came down and came to the funeral. Uh, and so we want to lift up prayers for Tommy's family at, at her loss and um, ask God to watch over and bless them in this difficult time. Uh, I mentioned on Wednesday during Ash Wednesday that I would set uh, put together a list for you all. It is in the bulletin. I hope you'll see it about different ideas for giving up or taking on. And that if you have anything to add to the list, please share that with me. Uh, these were some things, a variety of things um, that I've thought about over the years that I've learned about. And there may be something there that um, if you haven't chosen something or um, giving up or taking on, there's a variety of things you can do. Um, and so I encourage you to, to look at that list. Um, I, I am in the office. It, from January, I was still in the office, but... I am in different days. I'm not sure uh, what days I'll be in this week because I will, as I said, I'll be doing this, uh, I'll be doing a committal uh, for the burial for Tommy and we don't have a day yet because they're waiting because it's supposed to rain on Monday. So, but I am available by phone Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I will be off this Monday. Um, so I, if you, unless it's an emergency, if you don't mind giving me that day, I greatly appreciate that. You can send me a text and I'll get back to you on Tuesday. But again, if it's a true emergency, please, please get a hold of me. Um, 
The Hunger Walk is being held uh, in two weeks on Sunday, March 7th. It's a virtual one. If you read our announcement, it tells you about going to the Hunger Walk and registering with St. John Lutheran Church Griffin and picking Inspiritus, which is formerly Lutheran Services of Georgia, as the uh, group that will receive uh, some of the funds from the Hunger Walk. If you have any questions, please contact Amy Drog Miller about that. We're encouraging people to take a picture of them walking and share, and share it with the church online. I'm sure the Hunger Walk will also be asking for that as well. Uh, there is Zoom coffee hour at noon today. You should have received that um, way to be able to get onto Zoom. And then the Bible study that Jill Roy is leading on the walk by Pastor Adam Hamilton will be starting today at uh, 4 p.m. If you uh, need instructions for getting on, please contact Gail Harville. Her number is in here. Um, you can text me, but I will be out uh, this afternoon. So um, if you want to get a hold of Gail, if you don't have her number, get a hold of me and I'll give that to you. But uh, they will be doing a Zoom Bible study. And our group has started for Wednesday night. Uh, we will have devotions Tuesday through Thursday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Wednesday nights will be holding evening vespers with a message. That will not be live. It will be placed on there since we are putting the Holden evening service together with the devotion. So uh, just look for that to be on the St. John page on Wednesday nights. And then at 8 p.m. is the group doing um, the, the study on compassion. Uh, we met last week and we'll have our first session together this coming Wednesday uh, at 8 p.m. If you would like to know more about that, this is the week. Um, to join us because we've already started the work and it's something you do daily. But um, if, if you'd still like to join, please get a hold of me and let me know that. Lynn will be in the office Tuesday through Friday. As always, we've been asking you, please call before you come by. Please wear your mask. Um, and, and I'm just praying that you're all staying, staying safe. If you're still having trouble uh, getting um, signed up to get a shot, I know some of you have had that difficulty. There is... Um, different ways now to be able to find out about that. Uh, I'll try to see if we can get something put up on the Facebook page, but um, check in on Tuesday with me. And I don't have the we uh, the website right now, but I understand there is a website where you can go to be able to find out. I know several people are waiting to get called by, by their pharmacy, but there are places in the area. Uh, Upson Hospital is one of them that people are getting to go to to get uh, their shot. So let's keep loving our neighbor by wearing our mask, keeping our distance, watching out for each other. Even if you have had both shots now, I know a couple of you have, um, we still want to do it, especially for those of us who are anywhere near close to being able to get a shot. So I just pray for your safety and your health and ask you to keep loving your neighbor as yourself. Thank you for joining us today. And now uh, we will have our blessing. You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, free to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing to others. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity, amen. Our closing hymn is, O Lord, throughout these 40 days.
way, let us remember, through Jesus Christ, we are an equipping and transforming church that continues to grow, impact, and transform lives. Go in peace, prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.